Hello, my friends! Long time no see, right? Yeah, I've not had time to um, read stories to y'all. I'm sorry about that. But um, I am on winter break, and it is ending two days. Uh, two days from today, I go back to school on January 6th. And I thought, well, let me just read some stories to my friends back on my website, Read with Rishi. Alright, so welcome back to my channel, Read with Rishi. With, with, with Rishi. So, today I am going to read a book called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. And uh, I know y'all like the stories because, story, because Roald Dahl books are awesome. Alright, so let's get started. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Contents, Chapter 1, Here Comes Charlie, Page 1, 2, Mr. Willy Wonka's Factory, Page 6, 3, Mr. Wonka and the, and the Indian Prince, Page 11, 4, The Secret Workers, Page 15, 5, The Golden Tickets, Page 20, 6, The First Two Finders, Page 23. 7. Charlie's Birthday. Page 28. 8. Two More Golden Tickets Found. Page 32. 9. Grandpa Joe Takes a Gamble. Page 37. 10. The Family Begins to Starve. Page 41. 11. The Miracle. Page 46. 12. What It Said on the Golden Ticket. Page 51. 13. The Big Day Arrives, page 58. 14. Mr. Willy Wonka, page 62. 15. The Chocolate Room, page 69. 16. The Oompa Loompas, page, seven, page 74. 17. Augustus Gloop Goes Up the Pipe, page 78. 18. Down the Chocolate River, page 89. 19. The Inventing Room, Everlasting Gobstoppers and Hair Gobstoppers and Hair Toff Everlasting Gobstoppers and Hair Toffee, page ninety six. Twenty, The Great Gum Machine, page one hundred one. Twenty one, Goodbye Violet, page one o four. No, I might have said page one o one, but anyway, in in chapter twenty, but. 22, Along the Corridor, page 114, to, to save time I'm not seeing the 100, okay? Yeah, page 23, Square Candies That Look Round, page 119. 24, Baraka in the Nut Room, page 123. 25, The Great Glass Elevator, page 133. 26, The Television Chocolate Room, page 141. 27. Mike TV is sent by television. Page 147. That line was so long they needed another line to do the dots, guys. 28. Only Charlie left. Page 161. 29. The other children go home. Page 166. 30. Charlie's Chocolate Factory. Page 168. Oh, that book was so big my water bottle fell. And it's on the edge of the table. And it's on the edge of the table, so <laughs> I better keep it here. Yeah, alright, so the next page is the summary of the book, and of course y'all don't want to hear that because it will be a surprise. So, um, hold on, hold on for a minute. Alright, so in my first video, guys, I'm, I'm going to read five chap uh, um, five of the chapters out of... 30. So, um, I was thinking of telling y'all that about, I was, I was, I was thinking of telling y'all about that in the beginning of my video, but I forgot about that, but because I was trying to start a different inter introduction because I had to delete the last video. All right. So anyway, here we go. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Adventures are waiting for you. One, here comes Charlie. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. 
Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. And these two very old people are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are, their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket had a have a small boy whose name is, whose name is Charlie Bucket. This is Charlie. How'd you do? And how'd you do? And how'd you do again? He is pleased to meet you. The whole of this family, the six grown-ups, count them, and and little Charlie Bucket. Oh, hold on. The whole of this family, the six grown-ups, count them, and little and little Charlie Bucket live together in a small live together in a small wooden house on the edge of a great town. The house wasn't nearly large enough for so many for so many people. And life was extremely uncomfortable for them all. There were only two rooms in the place all together, and there was only one bed. The bed was given to the four old grandparents because they were so old and tired. They were so tired, they never got out of it. <laughs> Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine on this side, Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina on this side. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket and little Charlie Bucket slept in the other room upon, mat upon mattresses on the floor. In the summertime, this wasn't too bad, but in the winter, freezing cold drafts blew across the floor all, all night long, and it was awful. There wasn't any question of them being able to buy a better house or even one more bed to sleep in. They were far too poor for that. Mr. Bucket, Mr. Bucket was the only person in the family with a job. He worked in a toothpaste factory where he sat all day long at a bench and screwed the little caps onto the tops of the tubes of toothpaste from the tubes <clears throat> after the tubes had been filled. But a toothpaste cap screwer but a toothpaste cap screwer is never paid very much money and poor Mr. Bucket however and poor Mr. Bucket, however hard he worked and however fast he screwed on the caps, was never able to make enough money to buy one was never able to make enough money to buy one half of the things that that so large a family needed. <clears throat> there wasn't even a, there wasn't even a, there wasn't even enough money to buy proper food for them all. The only meals they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, and cabbage soup for supper. Sundays were a bit better. They all looked forward to Sundays because then, although they had. Because then, although, although they had exactly the same, everyone was allowed a second helping. The buckets, of course, didn't. The buckets, of course, didn't starve. But every one of them—the two old grandfathers, the two old grandmothers, the two old grandfathers, the two old grandmothers, Char Charlie's father, Charlie's Charlie's father, Charlie's mother, and especially little and, espe and especially little Charlie himself. Went about from morning till night with a horrible empty feeling, with a horrible empty feeling in their tummies. <clears throat> Charlie felt it. Charlie felt it worst of all. And although his father and mother often went out, and and although his father and mother often went out their own, often went without their own share of lunch or, or supper, so that they could give it to him. It's so that so that they could give it to him. It still wasn't nearly enough for a growing boy. He desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage and cabbage soup. The one thing he longed, the the one thing he longed for more than anything else. The, the one thing he longed for more than anything else was chocolate. Walking to school in the mornings, Charlie could see great slabs of chocolate piled up high in the shop windows, and piled up high in the shop windows, and he would stop and and he would stop and stare and press his nose against the glass, his mouth watering like mad. <clears throat> Like mine is like mine is right now. <laughs> many times a day, many times a day, he would see other children taking creamy candy bars out of their out of their pockets and munching them greedily, and that, of course, was pure torture. Only once a year, on his birthday, did Charlie Bucket ever get to taste a bit of chocolate. The whole fam did Charlie ever get to taste a bit of chocolate? The whole family, the whole family, saved up their money for that special occasion. And when the great day arrived, Charlie was always presented with one small chocolate bar to eat, to eat all by himself. And each time he received it on those marvelous birthday mornings, he would uh, he would place it at, he would place it carefully in a small wooden box that he owned and treasure it as though it were a bar of solid gold. 
and for the next few days he would allow himself only to look at it, but never to touch it. Then, at last, when he could stand it no longer, he would peel back a tiny bit of the paper wrapping at, at one corner to expose a tiny bit of chocolate, and then he would take a tiny nibble, just enough to allow the lovely sweet taste to spread out slowly over his tongue. The next day he would take another tiny nibble, and so on and so on, and it, and this way, and in this way, Charlie would make his 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 ten cent bar of birthday chocolate last him last him for more than a month. Mm, clever idea, right, guys? But I haven't yet told you about the one awful thing that tortured little Ch that tortured little Charlie, the lover of chocolate, more than anything else. This thing for him was far far worse than seeing slabs of chocolate in the shop windows, or in in the shop windows, or watching other children wa munching creamy candy bars right in front of him. It was the most terrible torturing thing you could imagine, and it was this: in the town itself, actually within sight of the house in which Charlie lived, there was there was an enormous chocolate factory. Just imagine that! Oh yeah, that is torture, right? Right? Yeah. And it wasn't simply an and it wasn't simply an ordinary enormous chocolate factory either. It was the largest and most famous in the world. It was Wonka's factory, owned by a man called Mr. Willy Wonka, the greatest invent the greatest inventor and maker of chocolates that there that there that there has ever been. And what a tremendous, marvelous place it was. It had huge iron gates leading into it and a high wall surrounding it, and smoke belching from its chimneys, and strange whizzing sounds coming from deep inside it. And outside the walls, <clears throat> for half, and, out, and outside the walls, for half a mile in every direction, the air was scented, the air was scented, with the heavy, rich smell of melting chocolate. Twice a day on his way to and from school, little tro uh, little trolley bucket had to walk right past the gates of the factory, and every time he went by, he would begin to walk very, very slowly, and he would hold his nose high in the air and take long, deep sniffs of the gorgeous, chocolatey smell all around him. <sighs> oh, how he loved that smell, and oh... How he wished he could go inside the factory and see what it was like. Two, Mr. Willy Wonka's factory. In the evenings, after he had finished his supper of watery cabbage soup, Charlie always went into the room of his four grandparents to listen to their stories. And then, after uh, Charlie always went into the into the room of his four grandparents to listen to their stories, and then afterwards to say good night. Every one of these old people was over ninety. They were as they were as shriveled as prunes and as bony as skeletons. And throughout the day, until Charlie made his appearance, they lay on huddled in their one bed, two at either end, with nightcaps on to, on to, with nightcaps on to keep their heads warm, dozing the time away with with nothing with nothing to do. But as soon as they heard the door opening and heard Charlie's voice saying, Good evening, Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine and Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina, then all four of them suddenly sit <clears throat> uh, suddenly sit up uh and their old and their old wrinkled faces would light up with smiles of pleasure, and the talking would begin. For they loved this little boy. He was the only bright thing in their lives, and his evening visits were something that they looked forward to all day long. Often Charlie's mother and father would come in as well, and standing by the door, uh, and stand and stand by the door, listening to the stories that the old people told, and thus perhaps per, for perhaps for. For perhaps, for perhaps, for perhaps half an hour every night, this room, for perhaps half an hour every night, this room would become a happy place, and the whole family would, and the whole family would forget that it was that it was hungry and poor. One evening, when Charlie went to see his, uh, one evening when Charlie went in to see his grandparents, he said to them, "Is it really true that Wonka's chocolate factory is the biggest in the world?" 
true? cried all four of them at once. Of course it's true. Good heavens, didn't you know that? It's about 50 times as big as any other. And is Mr. Willy Wonka really the cleverest chocolate master in the And is Mr. Willy Wonka really the cleverest chocolate maker in the world? My dear boy, said Grandpa Joe, raising himself up a little higher on his pillow. Mr. Mr. Willy Wonka is the most amazing, the most fantastic, the most extraordinary chocolate maker the world has ever seen. I thought everybody knew that. I knew he was famous, Grandpa Joe, and I knew he was very clever. Clever? cried the old man. He's more than that. He's more than that. He's a magi He's a magician with chocolate. He can make anything, anything he wants. Isn't that a fact, my dears? The other three old people nodded their heads slowly up and down and said, Absolutely true. Just as true as can be. And Grandpa Joe said, You mean to say I've never told you about Mr. Willy Wonka and his factory? Never, answered little Charlie. Good heavens above, I don't know what's the matter with me. Will you tell me now, Grandpa Joe, please? I certainly will. Sit down beside me on the bed, my dear, and listen carefully. Grandpa Joe was the oldest of the four grandparents. He was 96 and a half. And that is just about as old as anybody as anybody can be. Like all extremely old extreme like all extremely old people, he was delicate and, and weak, and throughout the day he spoke very little. But but in the evenings when Charlie, his beloved grandson, was in the room, he seemed in some marvelous way to grow quite young again. All his tiredness fell away from him, and he became as eager and excited as a young boy. Oh, what a man he is, this Mr. Willy Wonka, cried Grandpa Joe. Did you know, for example, that he has himself... Hold on, let me see if this is a question or a statement. Yeah, this is a statement. All right, so... Um, did you know, for example, that he has himself invented more than 200 new kinds of can new kinds of candy bars, each with a different center, each far, each far sweeter and creamier and more delicious than anything the other chocolate factories can make? Perfectly true, cried Grandma Josephine, and he sends them to all the four corners of the earth. Isn't that so, Grandpa Joe? It is, my dear, it is. And to all the kings and presidents of the and, and to all the kings and presidents of the Oh my is no oh, Earth, no, it's world. Sorry. And, and, and it is, my dear, it is. And to all the kings and presidents of the world as well. But it isn't only candy bars that he makes. Oh dear me, no. He has some really fantastic invent he has some really fantastic inventions up his sleeve, Mr. Willy Wonka has. Did you know that he's in that he's invented a way of making chocolate ice cream so that it stays cold for hours and hours without being in the ice box? You can even leave it lying in the sun all morning. <clears throat> On a hot day, and it won't go runny. But that's impossible, said little Charlie, staring at his grandfather. Of course it's impossible. Of course it's impossible, cried Grandpa Joe. It's completely absurd. But Mr. Willy Wonka has done it. Quite right, the others agreed, nodding their heads. Mr. Wonka has done it. Yeah, and then again, Grandpa Joe, and then again, Grandpa Joe went on speaking very slowly, speaking very slowly now so that Charlie wouldn't miss a word. Mr. Willy Wonka can make marshmallows that taste of violets and rich caramels that change color every 10 seconds as you suck them and little feathery sweets that melt away deliciously. The moment you put them between your lips, 
He can make chewing gum that never loses its taste and candy balloons that you can blow up to enormous sizes before you pop them with a pin and gobble them up. And by a most secret method, he can make lovely blue bird's eggs with black spots on them. And when you put one of these in your mouth, it gradually gets smaller and smaller until suddenly there is nothing left except a tiny little pink sugary baby bird sitting on the tip of your tongue. Grandpa Joe paused and ran the point of his tongue slowly over his lips like this, okay? Yeah, it makes my mouth water just thinking about it, he said. Mine too, said little, said little Charlie, but please go on. While they were talking, Mr. and Mrs. Bucket, Char while they were talking, Mr. and Mrs. Bucket, Charlie's father and mother, had come quietly into the room, and now both were standing just inside the door, listening. Ch tell Charlie about that crazy Indian prince, said Grandma Josephine. He'd like to hear that. You mean Prince Pondicherry, said Grandpa Joe, and he began chuckling with laughter. Completely dotty, said Grandma. Completely dotty, said Grandpa Georgina. But very, but oh, sorry, that was said. Grandpa, that's Grandpa Joe. Completely dotty, said Grandpa George. But very rich, said Grandma. But very rich, but very rich, said Grandma Georgina. What did what did he do? Asked Charlie eagerly. Listen, said Grandpa Joe, and I'll tell you. Three, Mr. Wonka and the Indian Prince. Prince Pondicherry, Prince Pondicherry wrote a letter to Mr. Willy Wonka, said Grandpa Joe, and asked him to come all the way out to India and build him a, and build him a colossal palace entirely out of chocolate. Did Mr. Wonka do it, Grandpa? He did indeed, he did indeed, and what a palace it was. It had 100 rooms, and everything was made of, was made of either dark or light chocolate. The bricks were chocolate, and the cement holding them together was chocolate, and the windows were chocolate, and all the walls and ceilings were made, and all the walls and ceilings were made of chocolate, so were the, so, so were the carpets and the pictures and the furniture and the furniture and the beds. And when you turned on the taps in the bathroom, hot chocolate came pouring out. When it was all finished, Mr. Wonka said to Prince Pondicherry, Mr. When it was all finished, Mr. Wonka said to Prince Pondicherry, I warn you though, it won't last very long, so you'd better start eating it right away. Ooh, he must have, he must have said, he must have thought of a really crazy idea because you can't eat a whole entire palace made out of chocolate, can you? No, you can't. Nonsense, shouted the prince. I'm not going to eat my palace. I'm not even going to nibble the staircase or, or lick the walls. I'm going to live in it. But Mr. Wonka was right, of course, because soon after this there came a... But Mr. Wonka was right, of course, because soon after this there came a very hot day with a boiling sun, and the whole palace began to melt, and then it sank slowly to the ground, and the crazy prince, who was dozing in the living room at the time, woke up to find himself swimming around in a huge brown sticky lake of chocolate. <clears throat> Little Charlie sat. Little Charlie sat very still on the edge of the bed, staring at his grandfather. Charlie's face was bright, and his eyes were stretched so wide you could see the whites all around. Is all this really true? he asked, or are you pulling my leg? It's true, cried all four of cried all four of the old people at once. Of course it's true. Ask anyone you like. And I'll tell you something else that's true, said Grandpa Joe, and now he leaned closer to Charlie and, and, and lowered his voice to a soft, secret whisper. Nobody ever comes out. Out of where? asked Charlie. And nobody ever goes 
in. In where? cried Charlie. Wonka's factory, of course. Grandpa, what do you mean? I mean workers, Charlie. Workers? Workers? All factories, said Grandpa Joe, have workers streaming in and out of the gates in the mornings and evenings. Except Wonka's. Have you ever seen a single person going into that place? We're coming out? Little Charlie looked slowly little Charlie looked slowly around at each of the four old faces, one after the other, and they all looked back at him. They were friendly, smiling faces, but but they were also quite serious. There was no sign of joking or leg pulling on any of them. Well, have you? asked Grandpa Joe. I, I really don't know, Grandpa. Charlie stammered. Whenever I walk past the, whenever I walk past the factory, the gates, the gates seem to be closed. Exactly, said Grandpa Joe. But exactly, said Grandpa Joe. But there must be people working there. Not people, Charlie. Not ordinary people, anyway. Then who? Cried. Then who? Cried Charlie. Aha! Then who? cried Charlie. Aha! That's it, you see. That's another of Mr. Willy Wonka's clevernesses. Charlie, dear, Mr. Bucket, Mrs. Bucket uh, called out. Mrs. Bu Mrs. Bucket called out from where she was standing by the door. It's time for bed. To, to, that's enough for, it's time for bed. That's enough for tonight. But mother, I must hear it tomorrow, my darling. That's right, said Grandpa Joe. I'll tell you the rest of it tomorrow evening. Four, the secret workers. The next evening, Grandpa Joe went on with his story. You see, Charlie, he said, not so very long ago, there used to be thousands of people working in Mr. Willy Wonka's factory. Then one day, all of a sudden, Mr. Wonka had to ask every single, every single, then uh, Mr. Wonka had to ask every single one of them to leave, to go home, never to come back. But why, asked Charlie. Because of spies. Spies? Yes, all the other chocolate makers you see had begun to grow jealous. All the other chocolate makers you see had begun to grow jealous of the wonderful candies that Mr. Wonka was making. And they started sending in spies to steal his secret recipes. The spies took job in the Wonka fact. Sorry, jo the spies took jobs. If that's plural, the spies took jobs in the Wonka factory, pretending that they were ordinary workers. And while they were there, each one of them found out exactly how a certain special thing was made. And did they go back to their own factories and tell? asked Charlie. They must have, answered Grandpa Joe, because soon after that, Fickle Gruber's factory started making an ice cream that would never melt even in the hottest sun. Then Mr. Prodnose's factory came out with a chewing gum that never lost its flavor however much you chewed it. And then Mr. Slugworth's factory began making candy balloons <clears throat> that you could blow up to huge sizes before you popped them with a pin and gobbled them up. And so on and so on. And Mr. Willy Wonka tore his beard and shouted, This is terrible! I shall be ruined! There are spies everywhere! I shall have to close the factory! But he didn't do that, Charlie said. Oh, yes, he did. He told all the workers that he was sorry, but they would have, but they would, but they would have to go home. Then he shut the main gates and fastened them with a chain. And suddenly, Wonka's giant chocolate factory became silent and deserted. The chimney stopped smoking, the machine stopped whirring, and, 
And from then on, not, not, not a single chocolate or candy was made. Not a soul went in or out, and even Mr. Willy Wonka himself disappeared completely. Months and months went by, Grandpa Joe went on, but still the factory remained closed. And everybody said, poor Mr. Wonka, he was so nice, and he made such marvelous things. But he's finished now. It's all over. Then something astonishing happened. One day, early in the morning, thin columns of white smoke were seen to were seen to be coming out of the tops of the tall chimneys of the factory. People in the town stopped and stared. Hold on, hold on. Uh, um. One day, early in the morning, thin columns of thin columns of white smoke were seen to be coming out of the tops of the coming out were seen to be coming out of the tops of the tall uh, uh, coming out of the tops of the tall chimneys of the factory. People in the town stopped and stared. <clears throat> What's going on? They cried. Someone's lit the furnaces. Mister Wonka must be opening up again. They ran to the gates, expecting to see them wide open and Mr. Wonka standing there to welcome his workers back. But no, the great iron gates were still locked and chained as securely as ever, and Mr. Wonka was nowhere to be seen. <clears throat> but the factory is working, the people shout. But the factory is working! But the factory is working, the people shouted. Listen, you can hear the machines. They're all whirring again. And you can smell the smell of melting chocolate in the air. Grandpa Joe leaned forward and laid a long, bony finger on Charlie's knee. And he said softly, But most mysterious of all, Charlie, were the shadows in the... Oops. Were, were the shadows in the windows of the factory. The people standing on the street outside could see small dark shadows moving about behind the frosted glass windows. Shadows of whom? said Charlie quickly. <clears throat> From uh, moving about behind the frosted glass windows. Sh behind the frosted glass windows. Shadows, shadows of whom? said Charlie quickly. That's exactly what everybody else wanted to know. The place is full of workers, the people shouted, but nobody's gone in. The gates are locked, but nobody's gone in. The gates are locked. It's crazy. Nobody ever comes out either. But there was no question at all, said but there was no question at all, said Grandpa said said Grandpa Joe that the factory was running. And it's gone on, uh, and it's gone on running ever since for these last ten, for these last ten years. What's more, the chocolates and candies it's been turning out have, have become more fantastic and delicious all the time. And of course, and of course now when Mr. Wonka invents some new and wonderful candy, Neither Mr. Ficklegruber, nor Mr. Prodnose, nor Mr. Slugworth, nor, nor Mr. Slugworth, nor anybody else is able to copy it. No, no spies, I'm thinking of species, but we're not learning about any animals or stuff here. No spies can go into the factory to find out how it is made. But Grandpa, who? Crunch. But Grandpa, who? cried Charlie. Who is Mr. Wonka using to do all the work in the factory? Nobody knows, Charlie. But that's absurd. Hasn't someone, hasn't someone asked Mr. Wonka? Nobody sees him anymore. He never comes out. The only things that come out of that place are chocolates and candies. They come out through a special trap door in the wall, all packed and addressed. And they are picked up every day by post office trucks. But Grandpa, what sort of people are they that work in there? My dear boy, said Grandpa Joe, that is one of the great mysteries of the chocolate-making world. 
We know only one thing about them. They are very small. The faint shadows, the faint shadows that sometimes that sometimes appear behind the windows, especially late at night when the lights are on, are those of tiny are the especially when the lights are on are those of tiny people, people no taller than my knee. There aren't any such people, Charlie said. Just then, Mr. Just then, Mr. Bucket, Charlie's father, came into the room. He was home from the toothpaste factory, and he, and he was waiting. And came uh, came into the room. He was home from the toothpaste factory, and he was waving an evening newspaper rather excitedly. Have you heard the news? He cried. He held up the paper so that they could see the huge headline. The headline said, "Wonka Factory to be opened at last to the lucky." To lucky few. Oh, I thought there was. I thought there was. Um, I thought it was to the lucky few, but, but it's too lucky. But it's too lucky few without any without any the in, in it. Anyway, here we go. Five. Uh, five. The golden tickets. You mean people are actually going to be allowed to go inside the factory? Cried Grandpa Joe. Read us what it says. Quickly. All right, said Mr. Bucket, smoothing out the newspaper. Listen. Evening Bulletin. Mr. Willy Wonka, the candy-making genius whom nobody has seen for the last ten... Uh, Mr. Willy Wonka, the candy-making genius whom nobody has ever seen for the last ten years sent out the following notice today. I, Willy Wonka, have decided to allow five children, just five, mind you, and no more, to visit my factory this year. These lucky five will be shown around personally by me, and they will be allowed to see all the secrets and the magic of my factory. Then, at the end of the tour, as a special present, all of them will be given enough chocolates and candies to last them for the rest of their lives. So watch out for the golden tickets. Five golden tickets have been printed on golden paper, and these five golden tickets have been hidden underneath the ordinary wrapping paper of five ordinary candy bars. These five candy bars may be anywhere in any shop in in any street, in any town, in any country in the world, upon any counter where Wonka's candies are sold. And the five lucky finders of these five golden tickets are the only ones who will be allowed to visit my factory and see what it's like now inside. Good luck to you all, and happy hunting! Signed, Willy Wonka. The man's, the man's daddy, muttered Grandma Josephine. He's brilliant, cried Grandpa Joe. He's a magician. Just imagine what will happen now. The whole world will be searching for those, for those golden tickets. Everyone will be, will be, everyone, everyone will be buying Wonka's candy bars in the hope of finding one. He'll sell more than ever before. Oh, how exciting it will be to find one. Oh, how exciting it will be. Let me see if that's right. Yeah. Oh, how exciting it would be to find one. Uh, I was right in checking. It's not, it's not will be. It would be. <clears throat> and all the, <clears throat> and all the chocolate and candies that you could eat for the rest of your life free, said Grandpa George. Just imagine that. They'd have to deliver them in a truck. In a truck. <laughs> They'd have to, they'd have to deliver them, they'd have to, del they, they'd have to deliver them, they'd have to deliver them in a truck, said Grandma Georgina. It makes me quite ill, it makes me quite ill to think of it, said Grandma Josephine. Said Grandma Josephine, nonsense, cried Grandpa Joe. Wouldn't it be something, Charlie, to open a bar of candy and see a gold, wouldn't it be something, Charlie, to open a bar of candy and see a golden ticket glistening inside? Oh, sorry, wouldn't, again, that's exclamation, I should have, I, the sentence with an exclamation point at the end, I should have checked, and a quotation mark, because, because someone's speaking. Uh, wouldn't it be, what, nonsense, 
Nonsense, cried Grandpa Joe. Wouldn't it be something, Charlie, to open a bar? Wouldn't it be something, Charlie, to open a bar of candy and see a golden ticket glistening inside? It certainly would, Grandpa, but there isn't a hope, Charlie said sadly. I only get one bar a year. You never know. You never know, darling, said Grandma Georgina. It's your birthday next week. You have as much chance as anybody else. It's your birthday next week. You have as much chance as anybody else. Much as much chance as anybody else. I'm afraid that simply isn't true, said Grandpa George. The kids who are going to find the golden tickets are the ones who can afford to buy candy bars every day. Our Charlie gets only one a year. There isn't a hope. Well, guys, that is the first five chapters of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Stay tuned for the for the next chapters I read. You know, you, you never know. It, it may be any number. Two, three, five. Well, bye for now. And y'all have a wonderful, wonderful break. As I mentioned in my... Uh, in my uh, video about the uh, bold spots in El Paso, so y'all, so y'all have a wonderful, wonderful break, and y'all, and y'all make a goal to make y'all's break finish strong because I certainly have made that goal, and y'all have a happy, happy, happy New Year. Goodbye for now.